What's up everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six, I'm Rob. Doing a little Campbelltown show down here. I have the Glen Scotia 18 bottled in 2021, as well as the Springbank 18 bottled in 2021. Springbank's got a new look with this tin here. It used to be a box, not very fancy. Now it's actually a little bit cooler. They got rid of a bunch of the boxes and tins for a lot of their stuff, but kept a few for their special releases. 50% bourbon and 50% sherry if I'm not mistaken on this one that's what gives it a little bit extra color whereas this Glen Scotia is aged in American oak and then finished in first fill Oloroso casks all right um, I believe it's a one-year finish gonna nose them taste them and give them a mark but before I do that I will say that when I first opened both of these I was kind of disappointed in the Springbank 18 really impressed with the Glen Scotia 18. So let's see how it is now. Okay, so this Glen Scotia has some nice Campbelltown funk, things that I don't typically expect from Glen Scotia. Nice ripe apple, like a touch of peat. A little bit more malty than you would expect for an 18 year old, which is really nice. And it just smells like thick, it smells like oatmeal. Really nice. The Springbank 18 over here. Okay, so it definitely has the Campbelltown funk. Lots of grassy hay notes, sweet hay, sweet honey. A grassy honey. There is some sherry notes in there as well. And dare I say, maybe like a touch of sulfur. Okay, back to the Glen Scotia for a sip. Really nice palette on this one. Both of these are 46%. The Glen Scotia has a nice sweet arrival. Grassy honey as well. I know I'm using that kind of nosing note that I got from the spring bank, but definitely get that on the palette here too. And like I said, there is Campbelltown funk, not what you would expect from a spring bank type Campbelltown funk, but it's there. Um, I guess it's a regional thing because these are different distilleries. Nice viscosity on the palate. So well-rounded, long finish. There's nice sweetness, very little bite, but like a nice little like spritzy kind of note that I like that I get from some Campbelltown type whiskeys or just in general, like I kind of look for that note in a whiskey. It's almost like a carbonated type taste. Really nice. Gonna give that a mark in just a sec. Gonna sip the Springbank 18 first. So on the nose, the Glen Scotia wins for sure. This does have a, like a, an interesting char note on the back end. Almost like a, like a burnt hay almost kind of note. There is a bit of sulfur on here and it's not a bad amount of sulfur. It's not off putting by any means, but head to head with the Glen Scotia because of the like purity of this one, it kind of takes a step back and the, allows the Glen Scotia to really shine. One more sip here. That's nice. It is nice. Um, is it almost $300 nice and for secondary prices of $350? Absolutely not. Um, I think they went a little crazy with the price on the 18 year olds. It's pretty reasonable up until 15 years old and then I don't know what happens, especially in Ontario, Alberta as well. 
the price has gone up with the Springbank 18 substantially. I don't know if that's a vendor thing or if that's a store thing, but it's too much for what you get in my opinion. Um, definitely not gonna buy another bottle of this version. Maybe next year's will be better. So far, I've been unlucky with Springbank 18s. I'm gonna give this one an 85. I think it's still good, but it's not worth the price in my opinion. Over here to the Glen Scotia, I'm gonna give this one more sip. So, I got these in a bundle and it was fairly reasonable in price, I guess for the bundle, it was like 400 bucks or something like that. Uh, my boys at uh, Malton Grains in Alberta hooked it up. Um, the Glen Scotia shines in this in this combo, and I know that the Glen Scotia was actually a throw-in, so it's kind of confusing, but I actually like it a lot better. I got to give this Glen Scotia an 89. I think it's a lot better than the Springbank 18. Um, one of my favorite 18 year old whiskeys at the moment. Uh, recently got the Glenallachie 18, which in my opinion is outstanding. Uh, I'll be reviewing that shortly. Um, I do have a lot to review, so I'm not exactly sure when that's coming, but it will come sometime this year. This Glen Scotia is really good. It's gotta be an 89. So like I said, 89 and 85. Um, yeah, and I would even say that the Springbank, am I being generous? Uh, maybe not generous. I think 85 is a fair score, okay? But the Glen Scotia, I might be being a little bit critical. You give this to me two, three years ago, maybe four years ago, and that's probably a 90 for me. So uh, really good stuff. Really happy with the Glen Scotia. I think it's great bang for your buck. I think you can get that for under $200 in most places in Alberta. Uh, if it's available in the US, probably closer to a hundred bucks. And it's unfortunate about the Springbank 18 and I think a lot of people will go crazy for it because of the color, but it's just not worth the money in my opinion and definitely not worth the secondary price. That's it guys. Uh, you can catch these videos early if you subscribe on Patreon. One dollar will get you these videos a little bit earlier. Whiskey Rant as well. Um, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. In the comments below, if you see something on the bar that you're interested in hearing about, interested in me moving up on the list as a Patreon, you'll probably get a chance in the near future to uh, request reviews from my bar, all right, uh, a little sooner, okay? So I think what's gonna happen is in the near future, I'm gonna be allowing my Patreons to vote on which bottle is reviewed next and that'll be a little bit easier to sort it out I have a whole bunch of bottles here probably about 40 or 50 and it's hard to decide what to review and what to pair it up with so you guys can help with that on patreon cheers